This is the Redmi Note 9T, an affordable 5G, wait, hang on, scratch that. This is the Redmi Note 9T, an affordable 5G smartphone for the masses. Yes, it is all about 5G. There are some pretty impressive internal specs, including Google Apps written on the box quite literally. I have the Nightfall Black 4 gig, 128 gig of RAM variant and prices at the top right hand corner based on the recent launch event it starts at 229 euros, which is very, very good for a 5G smartphone. Perfect for anyone wanting to enter into the 5G world. We get a silicon case in the box and of course we have the device itself over here with a MediaTek Dimensity 800U chipset based on 7 nanometer node technology. We have a USB Type-A to Type-C cord and we also have a charger block in the box. Yes, that's right. It is 22.5 watts but the phone can only charge up to a maximum of 18 watts. Let's give it an unwrapping, shall we? This is, like I said earlier, the Nightfall Black color variant. You also get it in Daybreak Purple, and those are the only two colors available. It does have this plastic on the back, but it is textured. I must say, I actually kind of like the aspect of how it looks and feels in the hand. And it says 5G at the bottom, which is great. Doesn't really change any form of its color shade when you tilt it in different areas. And we have a massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery under the hood, 18 watt fast wire charging, NFC and IR blaster, and sub six 5G support. Port. Like I said, it is a plastic back and plastic size, though we do have Gorilla Glass 5 and it doesn't really pick up too many fingerprint smudges, but you can go ahead and pop on that included case if you'd like to. I'd actually prefer to leave it off since it actually has a plastic backing. Its predecessor, the Note 8T, actually has a back mounted physical fingerprint sensor where this one has a side mounted one. We have an IR blaster at the top and we have pretty much three speakers. Well, actually one main speaker at the top and a main speaker firing down, but we have an extra hole at the top for more booming of sound. We'll get to that later. We have a type C port at the bottom with USB 2.0 transfer speeds and we do have dual SIM, dual 5G, which is awesome. And we have micro SD card supports. It doesn't say built for 5G on the camera module like we saw in the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G, which I actually think looks a lot better. And the camera module doesn't really protrude as much as the competition, meaning that when it is on a flat surface, the surface wobble isn't that bad compared to the rest of the devices over here. When it comes to a design perspective, it doesn't look half bad. Actually, it really looks a lot better than its price tag. It's also quite light at 199 grams and 9.05 millimeters thick, which is a bit on the thick side, but not too bad. The back looks fantastic at this price point, but what about the front? Will we get treated to a 19.5 by nine aspect ratio, 6.53 inch dot display because of the selfie cam there. It is full HD plus and we have 395 pixels per inch. Unfortunately, LCD, but we do have 16 million colors. The biggest unfortunate thing over here is that we are lacking a high refresh rate panel. So we're getting just 60 Hertz and 120 Hertz touch sampling rates. The colors do pop though, especially for an IPS LCD screen. The only AMOLED screen over here is the Oppo all the way on the right hand side. And I can't really notice much of a difference because that Oppo AMOLED screen is pretty cheap compared to these higher grade LCD panels that you see on the other phones over here. It gets pretty bright at 450 nits. It doesn't look half bad compared to the rest of the budget devices here. Don't put it against the flagship phone, but I mean, you could pretty much buy three of these for say a cheapish flagship phone. So keep that in mind as well. We only have a refresh rate of 120 Hertz on the Redmi K34 G on the left and the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G toward the right hand side over there. 60 Hertz on the 8T, 9T and Oppo F17 Pro. You do feel the difference in real day tasks, but it does take a knock to your battery life. So, so keep that in mind when you decide to pick up a phone with a high refresh rate panel, though most of the time you can just switch that down to 60 if you want more battery life. We have a couple other things that we can tinker when it comes to the display. Normal things that you would expect from MIUI 12. We also have dark mode over here. The transition effect looks pretty great. It works in third party apps as well, but there is unfortunately no always on display since it's lacking an AMOLED panel and no in display fingerprint sensor once again, because it's an IPS LCD panel. Instead, we have a physical side mounted fingerprint sensor. Yes, it is indeed secure and it works as you would expect 
Nice and fluid. I actually think a bit quicker than the Poco M3 I tested not too long ago. Compared to the back physical fingerprint sensor of its predecessor, the Note 8T, it's a tad quicker than that, I would say. There's not much of a difference between the two, though it is a lot more convenient on how to reach it with your thumb on the right hand side as opposed to the back. It's pretty much on par with other physical fingerprint sensors out there which are side mounted, such as on the Redmi K30 and Note 9 Pro 5G. And on the Oppo F17 Pro, we do have an in-display fingerprint sensor. I do like those, but it really does feel nice in the hand to be able to just reach with your thumb. Unfortunately, if you have small hands, it's gonna be a bit of a tough one. We do have 2D face unlock. It is unsecure since it uses the selfie cam but it does a great job pretty much neck and neck sometimes even a little bit quicker than the other smartphones around even though it is cheaper than those devices compared to the k30 over here you can definitely see it's pretty much on par with that and it's actually a tad quicker than the oppo over here which is known for snappy facial recognition systems we have a 13 megapixel f 2.25 selfie snapper on the front it is just one single punch hole no dual one over here it looks pretty great even in portrait mode i can't really notice much edge detection this is technic recording a 1080p 30 fps selfie video on the redmi note 9t it is completely capped at 30 fps and a max resolution of 1080p when using the selfie cam let me know what you guys think of the audio and video quality when recording with the selfie cam on the redmi note 9t at the back of the phone we have a triple camera setup the main camera is a 48 megapixel samsung gm1 sensor with an aperture of f 1.79 we also have a depth sensor as well as a macro sensor unfortunately no ultra wide sensor here i think that they landed up putting that toward the 5g aspect of the phone the main 48 megapixel still looks absolutely fantastic i'm not even exaggerating here guys it looks phenomenal compared to other flagships even the best of the best it's really on par but as soon as you go into that two times digital zoom it really looks shady five times and ten times is the max digital zoom honestly unusable guys don't use this phone if you want to zoom in. But once again, look how fantastic the shot looks. Throw in some portrait, pretty much no edge detection. It looks phenomenal out of this world. And I know that many people don't really use macro sensors, but when you do, this one has a pretty decent one to boot. When it comes to video, we do have 1080p at 60 FPS, which is a plus. Getting 60 frames per second on a mid-range or budget-friendly phone is definitely rare. And it looks great. There's no stabilization over here, but it looks pretty good not as good as its photos do we do have 4k 30 fps but there is no 60 fps option once again it looks really great it's not as smooth silky smooth as the 60 fps option but the detail is there we also have 4k 30 fps or 1080p 60 fps in a movie frame mode it does look as wide as ultra wide but it's actually just being cropped in it gives it a really nice aesthetic it really does kind of feel like a movie especially on this cold day here in shanghai when we record with my little figurine here up close and personal we can switch over to the macro mode though it's capped at 720p and 30 fps still looks pretty good in my books when it comes to focusing though this is not one of its strong suits. It takes a good couple seconds to jump into focus. We also have a cyberpunk filter. Not gonna touch too much on that, but you can see the focus there once more. This is also capped at 720p and 30 FPS. We have MIUI 12 skinned over Android 10. Hopefully we'll get MIUI 12.5 skinned over Android 11 pretty soon, probably with the upcoming Mi 11 launch when it comes to the global markets. So stay tuned for that one. And of course we have MIUI 12. It's what you've come to know and love. And if you get the global version of the phone like I have over here, Google is rooted into it. All your Google apps that you need, Everything that is Xiaomi-like is here. There isn't really much bloatware and all the Google apps kind of replace all the Xiaomi apps such as the Google Calendar, Google Discover, Google Voice, everything that you need Google-wise is here. There's also a split screen and floating windows. Floating windows is limited to just one. Split screen works as you would expect from a Xiaomi device. The haptics are actually really responsive for a phone at this price point. We also have different sound effects options over here, though no Dolby Atmos. Let's give these dual speakers a listen compared to its predecessor, the Note 8T.
We do have Game Turbo, which we've come to know and love on Xiaomi devices, which pretty much gives you a little bit of an overlay when you're in a game so that you can reply to some texts on the fly, ignore notifications, so on and so forth. It works great, but you can't use it while you're physically playing. We do have an FPS monitor within the developer options, which is great. We've seen this on plenty Xiaomi phones before. It's nice that it's become a standard. Hope more phones do this going forward. First game is PUBG Mobile. Unfortunately, the max graphics options with Ultra FPS is balanced. If you go above that in terms of graphics, then you don't get the Ultra FPS option. Ultra means 40 FPS. We need Extreme to hit 60, which is not available yet, but I don't doubt at all that we'll get a software update in PUBG's front in order to enable 60 Hertz on the Note 9T 5G. When it comes to Call of Duty, very similar over here. Medium graphics settings is the only thing available, though we do have high FPS option and we're getting a rock solid 60 FPS at the top left corner, as you can see, which is absolutely fantastic. This game caps at 60, the phone caps at 60, so it works pretty great. Grab yourself a kill streak and get zooming on in there. Kill yourself some enemies knowing that you're not gonna lag out too often, which that wonderful Dimensity 800 U chipset. Absolute max graphics, unlimited frames per second, running bullet force over here. Once again, getting a solid 60 FPS. This game is pretty graphics intense, so it is impressive if you ask me to run it at full HD and a solid 60 FPS on the Redmi Note 9 T 5G. Thankfully for that seven nanometer processed Note chipset. Speaking about that chipset, let's go into some benchmarks against its predecessor, the Redmi Note 8T with a Snapdragon 665 processing chip run on 11 nanometer processed Note tech. We have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery on the Note 8T as opposed to 5,000 on the Note 9T. We're gonna compare the battery results at the end of this as well as the temperature gain in degrees Celsius will be jumping through a speed test to test out 5G. Starting with the speed test app of here, you can see that the Note 9T 5G opened it up quite a bit quicker, getting them onto the same network of here, the same server, 220 megs per second on the Note 9T 5G. Because of 5G, of course, it is 78.1% faster than the 4G on the Redmi Note 8T. So if you wanna jump into 5G, this is probably the perfect phone for you to pick up since it is such a great price and it packs in wonderful sub 6 5G. Of course, not the best 5G, but it is the best in terms of range. So in my place right here, we're pretty far from a tower, but the range is absolutely fantastic in my apartment. And when it comes to Antutu, the FPS score over here was pretty much triple of what we saw on the Redmi Note 80. The benchmark run on the Redmi Note 90 was 39.9% high in terms of points as opposed to its predecessor. So that Dimensity 800U chipset run on seven nanometer tech is doing a fantastic job. When it comes to Geekbench 5, we're just focusing on CPU performance over here. We got a single core score of 598 and multi of 1749, which is 46.6% and 22.4% higher respectively, as opposed to the Note 80. Running 3D Mark Wild over here, this is just focusing on GPU and we got an average FPS score on the Note 90 of 9.4 as a opposed to 1.3 on the Note 80 and an overall score of 211 on the Note 80 as opposed to 1571 on the Note 90. That is definitely quite a big boost. Now getting back to the battery percentages and the temps at the end of doing all these tests, we drained at a rate of 14 milliamp hours per minute on the Note 90 as opposed to 14.4 on the Note 80. When it comes to temps, the Note 90 did get the hottest at 39.7 degrees in Celsius. They both gained the same amount in terms of temp, which is 10.5 degrees in Celsius. The Redmi Note 9T 5G is actually a fantastic phone. I had loads of fun reviewing it and that camera has impressed me more than I would have expected at this price point. There is unfortunately no ultra wide sensor, but of course we have 5G boosting this thing. So that is where the money went into. We have a wonderful side mounted fingerprint sensor, which is very responsive and works really well. That 6.53 inch LCD display is limited to 60 Hertz, though it still looks pretty gorgeous and it's running rock solid 60 FPS when gaming some pretty intense games. When it comes to benchmarks, it held up on the FPS department, looked a lot smoother, and of course 5G is the name of the game over here. That is what this phone is all about and it does it fantastically well. Putting this phone down and comparing it to the other smartphones, I have to say there are a lot of things to like about the Redmi Note 9T. 5G, mainly the 5G aspect. I really like the design, the display works really well, and I think it definitely has a thumbs up, especially if you're coming from its predecessor, the Redmi Note 80. It is certainly worth the upgrade, and it is a perfect entry point into the 5G world.